Good morning. It's a beautiful day. And we today are continuing our series about binding. So last week we talked about making binding, bias binding, regular binding, all sorts of different types of binding. So you can check for that on our website or here on the YouTube channel or on Facebook, and you can find those. And this this session will be recorded as well. So you can look for that. So this is class two in our series. And next week we have another one on binding using attachments. And today we're going to talk about how you put your binding on stuff. And um, we're also going to use some specialty feet as well. So I have my machine and I'm going to do a really quick recap just in case you didn't catch last week about putting your binding strips together. So you want to start with your strips if you're doing them individual and you take your strips, let, let the camera get in here. You're going to take your strips and you want to lay them so that they are perpendicular to each other. Okay. Now this is really handy because I actually have it on the mat so I can see if I'm straight or not. Um, but you would just want to lay them perpendicular. Now, how I do it, and everybody does everything different. So, and by the way, hi, I'm Reva. I didn't say that, so hello. Anyhow, um, everybody has a different way of doing things, and so it's okay if you do yours different. But I do like to pin to make sure that I do not, you know, get my fabric off of the place. Now, you notice that I left overhang up here and I left overhang down here. And that is because I want to stitch from this corner to this corner or actually this corner to this corner because it needs to be able to flop open. So I'm going to stitch from here to here and I need to be able, I will, I like to be able to see those little corners so I know that I'm aiming for the right thing. And now that I got my fabric situated the correct way, let me go ahead and move my pins. So now as we go, if you have any questions, please just put them in the chat. We'll answer them live and it will be really fun. Now, before you do this, this is, this is a really good thing to do is before you sew, take a look at how, where you plan on sewing and make sure that your binding will flip the right way because it's really a bummer to have to unsew stuff. Okay, so now we're going to use a couple of aids on our machine. You have on your machine, you have uh, a lot of times you'll have a center needle position and I'm using a stitch with a center needle position and you can probably hopefully see that little zero right there. However, there are a lot of machines have a different bobbin case that actually has the markings on it. So I'm going to take off this clear bobbin case and put the ones with the marking on it. So that way we can see what we're doing. Now, we want to stitch from corner to corner, right? The inside corner to inside corner. So what I like to do, then this is just what I do, is I put the needle down and then I slide the fabric up so the needle is in that little V that we have on that inside corner. Then take a look at where your fabric is. Mine's way over here and my zero, where's my zero? Let's find it, there's the zero. So I want to aim the other half at that zero and then put your foot down. Now, and it's talking to me. Okay, let well, I me mean, put that foot down. Let's put that in there. Make sure I'm on the zero. Now, as you sew, you're going to be able to use the lines that are on your uh, bobbin cover. If you have a machine like that has a laser guide or a projected guideline like this one does, we can turn on our guideline and then we can make sure that we get our fabric positioned exactly where we want it to be so we know that we're sewing exactly straight. Okay, and I didn't mean to sew over my pins because that's not good practice, so don't do like I do. Do what you're supposed to. <laughs> but there's my uh, stitched line right there. Hopefully you can see that nice bright pink okay. And then when you open it up, it's going to be a continuous piece. And the reason why we sew it on a diagonal like this is so that the bulk of your seam is distributed and not just one place. Think about it. If you had a seam all in one place, and when you fold and fold, that's going to be a huge lump right in this area. This way it's distributed out across. 
So now I'm going to trim off the little pokey out part, you know, that was too long right there. And then I come across, cut my seam allowance, and then trim off that one right there. And your dog ears are gone. You can go press it and you're ready to go. Okay, so that's making, putting your strips together. Now let's talk about using our strips. The first thing we're going to talk about is, I just wanted to real quick go over and show you how to do our um, Hong Kong finish on. This is for a garment. Okay, so it's a really nice little tiny little piece of fabric. Um, and this is done using a strip of fabric that I happened to cut at one and a half inch wide. And then I folded it in half and I pressed it. So now let me show you how to put that on. And I'm going to leave that foot on for right now. And I'm going to, you would do this on all of your um, exposed seams if you were doing a Hong Kong finish. So now let me put the foot down and I'm going to decide where I want. I'm going to aim the edge of the fabric right here where the inside of the toe is. Can you see where the silver stops? And then you have the clear. I'm going to aim for right there. And I'm just going to stitch. And this, you want to stitch to the wrong side of your fabric. I got pushing the wrong part on my pedal. Okay. Okay, so this is just under a quarter inch wide. Have you ever heard of a scant quarter inch? That is what is, um, that means just slightly less than a quarter. So now I've put this trim on there. Remember it was folded in half and this is just under a quarter inch, but I want to make sure that when I flip my fabric over, because we're going to flip this up and to the back. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come along and trim the excess and make that just about an eighth of an inch or so. So that way there is enough space to for the, the binding to go up and over. Now, one thing I did not mention that I should have is that I put all the raw edges together. I This is the folded edge out here. Okay, so now you would take this to your iron and you would press it really nicely that way. And then you're going to flip it up and come around to the back and flip it to the back side. And of course, you would press that as well. I don't have an iron right here, so I'm going to use my handy dandy glue stick. And you can do this too on your fabric. So I'm going to go along the seam allowance on the outside of the stitches and just get some glue stick on that. And this dries really quick, so you kind of want to be fast about it, you know. Okay, so now we've got that stuck down and we have a really, it looks really nice from the front side there. Put my lid on my glue stick. Okay, so now we have this really pretty dainty folded over piece on the front and you'll notice, can you see how, let me see if the other side you can see better. Can you see, nope, how the back is longer than the front. Here's where the front ends and the back goes there. And so if you'll peek, well, you can't be glued it in here, but the seam's up here, so this overlaps it. So we're going to be able to come in here with our straight stitch. I'm going to put my needle down into that seam, the seam allowance in between here in the little ditch that is being, uh, that is uh, in between the two different fabrics. And I'm just going to stitch right along in that ditch. And then that will secure the back side. And if you're using matching thread, you're really not going to see it from the front. Let's see. So that's a beautiful way to do to finish the edge of a ravelly fabric. OK, so now let's talk about other projects. Um, well, not yet. I want to show you how to do that without pressing and without ironing and, you know, the multi steps. And that is by using a binding foot. So this foot is very, very common. Baby Lock, Brother, Janome, Foff, Viking all have a foot like this. So what happens here is that your main fabric 
is going to go right in here. See how it goes into the little trumpet shape and then it comes and it goes underneath the foot that comes out the back. Okay, so that's how the fabric goes in, but we want to have our little trim. Now this trim is cut to one and one eighth inch and your foot, the manufacturer should be able to tell you, you know, on your instructions. So I cut a little bit of an uh, angle here because it'll be easier to feed that in. And I want to use my awl to get it started. So now if you take a look at the foot and I should probably put it on before I, you know, we start going, but do you see how the little, the little tube or the cone starts on this side? Can you see that, Carrie? Which way is going to be best? Okay, there we go. Okay, so it, there, you've got the little, the little tube starts over here and it comes around and then it ends right there. So when we put the fabric in there, we want the wrong side, the right side facing out. And then the goal as you're sewing is to keep it balanced so you have the same amount of fabric here as you have down here. You don't want to have the edge of your fabric up here and then really a wad of it down here. You want to keep it balanced. Okay. So I'm going to put this foot on. So Carolyn's asking how thick can the layers of fabric be for that foot? This is not for a big thick amount of fabric. I did... Um, you know, when I was going through and using it, I tried doing it with a quilt sandwich and it seemed to be just a little bit too thick. However, that doesn't mean that you can't. It just means you have to fiddle with it a little bit more. And I'm going to talk about edges of quilts here in a minute, and that would help probably too. So what I'm going to do is take the awl and I'm going to stick it in here. And I want to just, whoops, I'm doing it blind just so you know. I should have care. I should look in the camera. Okay, I'm going to stick this in the tube, get it going, and then slide the awl in and have that pull it down. See how it's coming? Because you can grab onto it with the awl and then go out the back and see how it turns it underneath. You can probably see right there you got two folds. And this is always a good thing to have extra fabric and give yourself a nice tail out the back. Now, we want to slip this in here. And the reason why... It's not really designed for big, thick layers of fabric. Is because this makes such a tiny, it's only using an eight, one and an eighth inch fa um, piece of fabric. And so it really, uh, it just doesn't have enough bulk to get around. Now, um, other thing to know is that you want to kind of make sure that your fabric stays centered in your strip. So what I kind of do is lightly fold it over but don't pinch it because it needs to do its thing here right so i want to make sure that i keep the fabric pushing in and i'm going to go ahead and stitch and the the um binding will turn for us as it goes see how it's turning under oops so i let it get away from me this is also a really good way to make spaghetti straps, as you'll see here in a second. Because if you just feed the, th the fabric in, look, it stitches a really nice little uh, little strap. But that's a, one way you could do um, a French seam or a Hong Kong finish. Not a French seam, but a Hong Kong finish without doing the three steps. Right? Applying and pressing and then flipping it over and then uh, stitching again. So that's a nice little finish on that. It's great for garments and, and other things. Okay. But again, that's a little bit tiny to work with um, quilts. Okay. But that is one binding foot. Okay. Let's take this foot off and now let's talk about regular binding. And I'm going to put the quarter inch foot on and let's take a look at that really quick. Um, maybe if I set it, no, nope, you can't see. Oh, there we go. Okay. So on your quarter inch foot, this is clear, so the markings are uh, printed in red. If you have a metal foot, it will ha probably have lines or little nubbins. So there's the hole. This is where the needle goes. So this line here and the one across is at in line with the needle. The, not, the little uh, mark in the back and the one in the front is a quarter inch away from the needle. So we're going to use that when we're working with our fabric today. So Reva, I've had two people ask the same question. How do you turn a corner with that binding foot? 
uh, with the one before that, um, and we're going to talk about turning corners in a little bit, and it's going to be a similar process, so, but uh, same but different. So hold on, and we'll come back to that. Sound good? Okay, I'm going to grab a chair because this is, i got to see what I'm doing now. Okay, so now let's talk about sewing um, your binding on. Now, <clears throat> you can do a couple of different things. I, I mentioned a minute ago that we were going to talk about controlling your quilt. So if you have your quilt sandwich open like this, that's perfectly fine. But you will see that it has fluff, right? So if you are finding that that is um, kind of not cooperating with you, you can do a zigzag around the edge, just a, right off the very edge of your fabric. And what that does is that will compress all three layers together and make it uh, be less bulky. And another way you can do that is to use your serger. And, and this is really fast. And then you just whip around your edges and then it keeps it really uh, nice and compact. Great thing to do if you're not getting to the project right away and you want to make sure that when you come back, it's going to be uh, ready to go. Okay, so um, let's talk about uh, putting on our binding. So I'm going to use the bigger piece, I think. I have two different lengths. They're both the same size, as in this is cut at two and a half inches wide, and I folded it in half and pressed it. Okay? Now, when you start making your quilt, you want to leave yourself a nice long tail. In fact, I'm going to switch quilt pieces because I want more space. You want to leave yourself a nice long tail at the beginning and at the end. So when you measure all the way around your project, this one was uh, 17, so it was 34 inches all the way around. So I cut this with an extra 10 or 15 inches. And so I have plenty to go all the way around. So I'm gonna go ahead and start sewing on a side. You don't necessarily want to start exactly on the top or dead center on the sides or in the bottom. If you offset it, it will fool the eye a little bit. Yes. Quick question. So does the serger seam make the edge stiff after adding the binding? I haven't noticed that it makes any difference. That's a very good question. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and stitch around and I'm stitching at a quarter inch, which the edge, see how the little toe dips in right there and then it gets chubby again? That little dip in is my quarter inch away. Now, you'll want to use, especially on a bigger piece, you'd want to use your quilt clips and clip it to make sure it stays right where you want it to go. But I'm not going to right now because that's such a short distance. Now. I'm gonna get prepared. Let me stitch just a couple of little stitches down here just to get the, the fabric anchored. And then I'm gonna stop with my needle down. Okay, now we're gonna to want to stop a quarter inch before the edge of the fabric. The markings on your foot are great for that. However, the binding is covering up the edge of the quilt so we can't see it. So what I'm going to do is take my Choco liner and I'm gonna line up my ruler with the quarter inch. See how my quarter inch is in line with that? And I'm just gonna run a little line on here to show me where quarter inch is. And actually, I went crooked, good thing. Choco liners let you, let you erase just by rubbing it off. So there's our little spot there. And I'm gonna mark the very corner because we're gonna to want to aim for that in a minute, okay? So I'm gonna stitch down and I'm gonna stop right at that line. And there's, again, there's many ways to do binding. This is just one way. Okay, I'm, gonna, I'm getting close and I can see my red mark and there I'm at my quarter inch. So my foot is down, my needle is down, I'm gonna raise the foot and I'm gonna pivot and I'm going to sew to that corner. And then I'm going to cut my thread. And now we're going to turn that corner. Okay? So I've sewn off the corner. So what you're going to do now to make your mitered corner is fold back the fabric. 
you're going to end up with a 45 degrees here, but you'll notice that this, the fold of the fabric, again, I sewed the raw edges here. The fold is out here. You want to fold this back so you have a square right here. It's, it's straight across. Okay. And then this is diagonal. And then you're going to fold back on itself just like that. So now I have a fold here. And if you peek under, you have the diagonal there and you have a nice square. You don't have any type of weird angle going on there. And then I'm going to take the clips. And I'm going to just for right now, I'm going to hold that in place while I'm fiddling about. I didn't get that on very smooth, did I? Let me fix that. And then I'm going to come down and put a couple of clips because I want my fold to stay in place. Okay. So now we're going to rotate this way, get that clip out of there. And this is where this, the marking in the back works really, really well. I'm going to bring my fabric edge back to, um, so the fold is on that back piece. So it's a quarter inch behind the needle. Okay, just get it right there. And we want our edge at the quarter inch. And then we're going to just sew. And you can do your fixed stitch to lock it in place. And then we can start sewing. Okay. Now I just really want to get around because I want to show you how to put the um, pieces together. So let me mark my quarter inch real quick so I know where to stop. And the clear foot's kind of nice because then you can completely see through that so you can see when to stop. And then I'm going to pivot and stitch off. Okay, so let's do it again. <clears throat> We're going to fold this back and then fold it on itself. Oh, now take a look right here. Can you see how that is not, see how there's a fold there and a fold there and it's sticking out too much? I didn't do a very good job of folding that. So take your time, make sure it's nice and square. Much better. Better job, Rita. Okay. And so, you know, it just takes, it does take time. It's nothing that you rush. Now, I remember when, well, I still do it now, is I always assume that people who are good at sewing sewed very, very quickly. And that is not necessarily the case. And okay, so I'm going to take that fold. I'm aiming for that back, the back mark that's a, um, a quarter inch behind the needle position lock that stitch and then we'll just sew so you don't have to sew very very quickly um, i do recommend you sit in front of the machine you'll actually go straighter i mean that's my excuse for today why i'm not i i actually am a very crazy sewer i i don't necessarily sew straight um it takes a lot of concentration for me to do that <clears throat> okay quarter inch mark again <coughs> excuse me and we're going to come down here, and then I'll put the needle down, raise my foot, stitch off. <coughs> All right. So let's do it again. We're going to fold it back on itself. Make sure that we're nice and straight. Take your time so it's square. And then... Get that ready. So I'm going to put that little clip in there to hold. You really, oh, this one actually, as I flipped it, I noticed it's kind of hanging out there a little bit. You don't want that because then it's going to be saggy, I guess. It's going to be too much fabric. That just won't look right. Okay. Boy, howdy, we still have another corner to do. Guess I better hurry up. You guys are going to get bored. Okay. So let me get that back under there a little bit. Fix the stitch. And then we'll sew. Okay, so now um, this is how you turn a normal corner. So the principles will still play in when you're doing a, 
using an attachment. So when you're using an attachment and you need to um, ad, uh, turn a corner, you want to stop and you will pull your fabric out behind you, behind the foot, the, um, and then you go back in. Um, then you turn your corner and you pull it back toward you. Oh, there it goes again. Oh, it's going to go on the floor. Oh, oh, oh. Catch it, carry. Uh, my uh, chuckle liner was getting away from me. Okay. Needle down, pivot, stitch off, cut the thread, and we'll do it the last time. Now this one, same thing applies, but when we start stitching, we are not going to go as far because we don't, we're not going all the way down. We need to stop and we're going to connect these two. So I'm actually only going to stitch just a little bit because this is a very small piece. Um, okay, so let me line up my back. A little bit too far. There we go. And then I'm going to stay stitch it or do my fixed stitch. And then I'm going to stitch down and that's where I'm going to stop. Okay. So um, when I'm doing a bigger project, I do like to leave maybe 10 inches here. Okay. So what you're going to want to do is we're going to come over here to this side over here. And let's take a look at this because we're going to prep our, our little piece. So this piece is too long and this piece is too long, right? So let's get this piece figured out. So I'm going to go, first of all, I'm just going to take this piece and I'm just going to chop, chop it off. Actually, I can chop it off with scissors. I'm just going to chop off a piece and we're going to use this for our, our kind of a ruler. So here is our, this is how wide that piece is, right? So we're going to take this piece and I'm going to, let me cut this piece off right here. Let's cut it. Make sure it's nice and straight. I'm just going to hack that off. Let me grab my rotary cutter because things are straighter with a ruler. Okay. And I have my ruler lined up the fold of the fabric right there. And if I didn't tell you this fabric, was, these strips were two and a half inches wide. Okay, so now we're going to lay this across. So I have my piece there. Here's how wide it is. That's two and a half inches. So you're going to lay that across. And then you can mark at the two and a half inches right there. And that's where we're going to cut that one off. So I'm going to, do you see the little mark right there? It's right there. I'm going to line the ruler up. And I'm going to cut that off. Oh, I made it. Do you see how it's a little bit long? Look at that. That might give me a saggy binding. So I'm going to trim that off. So I, I, you want it to be nice and snug. Okay. So let's cut some threads here. Let us know. Is that pink thread? Is that something that you're able to see really well? Um, it's always a challenge to find, find the right color. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to open up one side open up the other and I'm actually going to unstitch this a little bit and give myself a little bit more room to work with. Okay, we're going to open up this side. And when you remember how we sewed the strips together when we started today, we had right sides together, right? And then we sewed from corner to corner. Let me grab a couple of pins. So I'm going to put right sides together. Now this one doesn't have the overlap like I had before because I don't have we don't have the luxury of that right now with this way of attaching the two pieces together. So I'm going to sew. I'm going to open that up a little bit more. See how it was pulling and I couldn't get it flat. So let me open this up a little bit more. Okay. So I want to take this and actually I'm going to put a clip in that little project to keep him bending over so this is not pulling on it. Okay. So right sides together. And we're going to sew from corner to corner. So let's get over to the machine. And I'm going to turn my light back on. And they said, yes, the thread is good to see. Okay, good, good, good. We've tested all sorts of colors. And it's so, 
so hard. And I'm going to give myself a little guide so I can see where that starts. I don't know if you can see my little white mark, but okay. So since I don't have the luxury of a nice cooperative long piece of fabric, I'm going to take that mark that I just did and line it up with my guide. And oh, I'm going to put that foot, that needle down, and I'm going to slide that up until it touches the needle. And then I'm going to put my foot down. And now I want to make sure that I'm aiming. Take a look right here too on the bed of the machine. You also have a zero mark here on this machine, so I can kind of eyeball up to that. And you can also take a look at the, the projected guidelines so you know that you're going straight. So I'm going to stitch a little bit. And now I want to readjust because can you see how this piece is folding under? Let's open that up now. I didn't want to do it before because it would pull from the other side. So we'll just get far enough and then... This next pin I am going to take out because, there I slid it out, because it was um, going to be in the way. Okay, so now we've got that. Cut our thread and hold your tongue right and maybe it worked, right? Okay, so let's just trim off the extra fabric. And you can take this to your iron or you can... Um, or you can finger press it, which is usually what I do because I'm, you know, sitting at the machine. So I'm just going to give that a little bit of love and fold it in half. And we should have a voila, <laughs> unless you twist it. And then, but there, that's how you put it together. You just have to make sure you put the right side together. But it would have been the right length. That, that was looking really good till I messed it up, right? Okay, so hopefully you got the gist. If you didn't, let me know. So let's talk about doing, it happens, right? Okay, so let's talk about our corners now. Um, but before I do, if this was not twisted in all kitty wampus, and all to fix that, all I'd have to do is unstitch it and flip it around. Um, then you just go back and sew your straight stitch right there. Okay, so now we have our corners. So if we take a look at our corner, when you open it up, you have a really nice little uh, mitered corner. So now I want to look at the way that that fold is going. Kathy and Don both said they, they've done that before. Okay, yeah, of course. And it always happens on, you know, when you don't want it to, right? So you're going to flip your sides, to the pieces to the back, and let's put our little clips in there. There's a clip there, and we'll put a clip here. Now, what you want to do is look at how that is forming the corner. If it looks lumpy, fix it, right? And then um, come across the back. What I usually do is I have one piece go all the way up, and then I take the other piece. So it's kind of, see how it's making kind of the, it goes all the way to the edge. And I hold that kind of with my thumb, stuff the other piece back down on it, and then it has a nice minor corner. Now, you'll notice that I have more on the back than I have on the front. And that probably was my point of view of where I was looking when I was sewing. Or I could have sewn with a little bit more than just a quarter of an inch. So always test out to make sure you're getting what you want. Okay, now, if you want to, you can pin. I really like taking now, um, I'll take a little bit of glue stick, stick that in there, and stick that down. Then I can come up onto here and I usually go down the seam allowance a little bit and then I get that turned over and then that way my corner looks nice. Now you can do that with all four corners, right? Keep going all the way around. You're going to do the same thing and I'll just keep clipping as I go and clip into here. And then I'll do the same thing. I look at how that corner, is the corner form nice? It is. So then I'll give myself a nice little uh, clip on this side. And then I will go in and flip it to the back side. Take my glue stick, stick it up in the corner, and let that stick down. And then put a little bit there. Just a little bit in the corner because you don't want it to show it and if it shows it's okay because this will dry clear um, but then you can get it uh, positioned and I see that I've overlapped a little bit so I did not get as much up into the corner as I needed to and now I went too much see how I went too much 
So you want to have those match. There we go. So you want a nice corner that matches right up. So you'll just work your way around your whole project and then you have options. You have option one, which would be to sew it on your sewing machine, which is what I would do because I'm a sewing machine girl and I prefer that. So again, we're gonna do that stitch in the ditch, use matching color of thread and just come right down right along the intersection between those two and i would normally stop with this the needle down but i went one stitch too far and then you would continue down all the way around okay and then and then that would be good and so what you're going to get and it's important if you're going to do that you do need to have the back be a little bit longer it doesn't have to be as long as mine but it does need to be a little bit longer than the front so when you stitch here it catches the back now if you are someone who doesn't like the look of that, that's perfectly fine too. And I'm left-handed, so I go this way. So you can just take your thread, a needle and thread, and tie yourself a knot and make sure all the threads are up inside. And then you can just walk, walk your way around. Now, I went too far in. You need to be in the fold of that so you need to have it come out the fold and then you can travel along. We're gonna come, just go through the backing of the quilt, not into the front of the quilt. You just want to stitch along and you can, when you come out, go right down below it. S travel just a little bit through into the, um, along the backing and then up through the fold. And you're just going to do little pick stitches and that will hold that down. Now, if you like to watch TV in the evening or something and you want something to do, you don't need your, your hands need to do something. I always have to be doing something. Then you could choose to do your um, stitch, your binding this way. And then it will give you, you, even though I use the bright pink thread, you can't see any of those stitches. So I stitched from here to here. And so that turns out really nice. And then, of course, you're only going through the lining so you, or the backing, so you're not seeing any of those stitches there at all. Okay? So a uh, couple different questions about what kind of glue stick you're using. Oh, this is um, the Quilter Select Fabric Glue Stick. And it's really pretty cool. It's bright yellow. So you can see it. Let me see if I have. Here, there's this light. So you can see this on light fabric. And you can see it on dark fabric, so you can see where you glued, and it dries really quickly. Um, so usually, like if I'm doing the binding or something, I set it on there just for a minute, and then it will hold it together. It will wash out, so it doesn't stay permanently in your fabric. So it will, it will launder out, and then if you happen to get it on the edge, like I did here, I got it too far on here. Can you see how it just dries kind of clear? It has a little bit of a milky look to it. Um, so that will wash out, but it doesn't stay yellow like that. It dries back. It's not going to leave neon yellow in your fabric. Okay, and it's fabric safe. So, okay, any questions on that? Is it just, it, is that one the best? So it's the one that I like to use. Um, in the past, we used to use like school glues and stuff. Um, oh, this doesn't gum up the needle because it dries quick, so it doesn't gum up your needle. Um, when I've used school type glue sticks, they they stay wet a really long time. They get gooey. I've actually found there's one glue uh, school type glue stick that people were using because it, it's a nice vibrant color, and you can see where you use it. My kids used that one time in a project and it never dried. It was always so gooey. So I stay away from those. You can also get like fabric glue sticks that look like a standard glue stick, but I find that they're hard and chalky. So this one I really do like to use because it's small, it, it, it's easy to hold in your hand and you can get things precisely where you want them. And it, it's just really cool. So I really like that one. One other question that was asked is, would this method be the same if the bottom Quilt fabric is used for the binding. I'm guessing like a self binding. That's different. That's com that is same but different. Some similarities, but it is totally different. And we'll do that another time. Maybe 
if, if we can work it into next time, maybe we'll do that next time too, uh, at our next one. Because that's really a fun way to do binding. I like self-binding. So, um, so that's pretty cool. Okay. So now let's look at doing pre-folded binding. I'm going to, I'll leave that foot on right now. Okay. So if you purchase, this is also called double fold binding because it's folded once in and again. So it's folded twice or maybe it's single fold. I don't know. It's the one that is basically bias tape, right? Putting it together, turning the corners, all the same thing, but putting it onto your projects a little bit different. So you're going to open it up. Okay, open it up. And so depending on the finished size of your binding, you're going to stitch where the fold is. So I'm going to take my quarter inch foot off and put my regular foot back on just so um, it's going to be easier for me to control because I'm not aiming for where the, um, the center or the side of the foot is. Okay, so you're going to take this and we're going to just clip it on. The pins I was using earlier are really awesome uh, because they're heat resistant and they you can grab onto them really easy. Let me show you. It's got little grippies on it. So, you, you know, you probably saw me slide it out. I was able to just kind of pull it out like that without grabbing onto it. So they're really awesome. However, when you're working with binding, it's going to be easier if you use clips because the bulk of the fabric and when you put a pin in it it distorts the fabric a bit so i'm going to go ahead and just use the clip so that's why you see me using both pins and clips well and glue because i i use that a lot of times too oh and by the way the glue stick those of you who are asking about the glue stick if you put in zippers or you want to put ribbon on as a trim that glue stick is awesome because you can just glue it where you want it to go okay so I am going to, you would leave a tail just like you did before. I'm not going to because we're not going to sew all the way around with this. But I have my um, projected guidelines right in that fold of that fabric. Now you don't want to press this out at all. You want to you want to leave the um, leave the creases in there because you're going to need those. But I am going to move my needle to the right. Two little ticks. Now, if your machine doesn't do tiny little ticks, just move it ever so slightly to the right. And that would be called a scant seam. So if, before we started talking about a scant quarter inch, if you were lined up on the quarter inch and you, you moved it a hair over or moved the fabric a little bit away from the quarter inch, that is scant. Scant means less than. So now I'm just going to stitch and I'm just aiming for staying right here in that, that folded line. Okay, and I'm going to come down to the bottom here, and then we'll stop. Okay, so now we have it stitched on, right? There's it stitched on. Now what we're going to do is fold it up and to the back. Okay, and now it looks really nice. So you can do two things here. You can hand stitch it like we talked about before or you can machine stitch it and have a stitch just right ever so tight to there. You just gotta make sure that you're gonna catch that back edge. If you purchase bias tape that's folded like this from the store in a package like, uh, I think it's Wrights that makes it, you will find, can you see how I just refolded this, how one is longer than the other? You're gonna find that packaged bias tape does that. The one that's shorter is the front. The one that's longer is the back, so it will go back behind. It is that, I hope that makes sense. Because you want to be able to, if you're going to stitch in the ditch, you want to make sure that this little guy is coming over. So here's where I stitched it on, right? So I need to make sure that this back edge covers that. So that way if I stitch in that ditch, it will tack down the back. This is also another great place for the glue stick. I mean, seriously, it, it's just gonna save you so much time because you can get it positioned right where you want it to go. How many times have you pinned something and then you have wibbles and wobbles and it's not a straight line? If you glue it, it's right where you want it to be. 
So then you can either stitch it with a machine or you can hand stitch. Okay. So Dawn is asking, do you do the corners the same as the first binding? Um, let me think. You, yes, you would do the same thing. So when it's flat, I, I man, I can unglue it. It's, I can, because you can always re-glue it. So yes, when I get down here, I would sew right off. You'd flip, flop, do the exact same thing. Okay. Is that, hopefully that makes sense. That was a good question, Don. Okay, now let's look at another foot. This is a adjustable binding foot. And this is available like brother, baby lock. So you're going to find uh, various manufacturers that have this foot. Now this one's a little bit different because you're going to see that everything's attached. Where this foot, everything was attached, but it's a snap-on. Okay, this one has its own little ankle to it. So I'm going to need to um, actually, actually I'm just have to show you because it's not going to work because this is a high shank machine and this needs the adapter and I left it in the machine so I don't have the adapter unless, anyway, so I'm not going to be able to stitch. Boo-hoo. But let me show you how it works. You're going to put it on. And this is how I can tell if it's the wrong foot. Look at how much space I have there. So let me put the foot down and kind of give you an idea how this works. So when you have this foot, let me take it off so you can first, so you can see. Do you see how it has this piece right here and it has metric markings on it? Five millimeters, 10 millimeters, 15, 20, right? And then you have a little, you have a little thumb screw right here. And if you adjust that thumb screw, take a look. Oh, this is really kind of hard to see on the camera, I'm sure. You have the piece that comes and angles and flips around here that goes around, okay? Then this piece right here, there's a little piece that cups the opposite direction. That's what's attached to the thumb screw. So when you move the thumb screw, it changes the width that you can put inside. Can you see, can you see at all that, how that's getting wider? Okay, and then if you look at the top, you can really see because then you're going to see the markings where the, how it, it adjusts. Okay, so how you use this in a couple of different ways um, or a couple of different things you're going to do. This takes the pre-folded stuff. So if you can see, see how it has a C, it cups around. Look at the all. You see how it comes down here, right? There's a little lip. See that? and it comes up and around. So this is one curve right there. That's for the, the big folded edge of your binding. This is for your top fold and your bottom fold. So when we slip in our folded stuff, we're gonna slip it in there. I need to go bigger because, going the wrong way, because that won't fit. So I'm gonna adjust that until my binding can fit in there. I need to go a little bit more. So that's why you can adjust that is so you can get the size of the binding that you've purchased to slide in here. Okay. See how cool that is. So this is going to guide your binding for you while you have your fabric in there. Now this is a plastic foot and it has some give to it. So if you have your, your edges of your quilt kind of compacted, like I do here, you should be able to get that in there and be able to work with it. So this is the adjustable foot, okay? And it can work with thin fabrics too. So there, that's how we would sew it. Now, there's another adjuster, and that's this guy right here. Now, when you loosen that, this is gonna just go back and forth right here. So what you do here is get your, your needle where you want it to be in the fabric, and adjust the foot so it lines up so you can have your your fabric where you want it to be. So if I was gonna do center needle position, let's see if I can show you how this works. Again, I can't sew with it <laughs> right now, but um, let me put the foot, oh, it is down. Okay, so I can see, I don't, can you see how the needle is off the fabric? So instead of adjusting your needle position, you can actually just move the foot over, I'm gonna get loose enough so I can do that. So you can move the this back and forth so it gets right where you want it to be. So that way you can stay in a consistent spot. But as you sew, 
this will just feed your bias in keeping the the little uh the top and the bottom separate because they're in different holders there and they're even it's being held straight over here so that's how that foot works so hopefully that has um, given you some ideas of things you can do with your uh, binding oh also this foot works really good for fold over elastic so um, you can use it for that as well okay so if you have any more questions just put them in there you can always re-watch this video on our facebook page on our youtube channel or just go to our website and under um, inspiration you can find our videos there as well so i hope that's been helpful i hope you can bind something oh and when you do make sure you don't twist the binding like i did and then you'll be happier so we'll see you next time where we're going to do a little bit more with binding and we'll so i'll show you the um how to do the fold over binding and then also i will show you how to use binding attachments so those are pretty fun so we'll see you next time